All right, welcome back. Uh, in this video, what we're going to talk about is what it means to, for something to be random. Okay? Random is a very important term, and random is a term that's used improperly a lot. Okay? Random doesn't just mean... Um, um, I, I <laughs> it's hard for me to give a good, bad example, but just let's just talk about what is random. When something is random, it means that every outcome has an equal probability of occurring. And the best example of this is dice, right? If I roll a die, if I roll one dice or a die, right? There are numbers on it, one, two, three, four, five, six. If it's a fair die, each of these numbers has an equal probability of coming up, one and six, right? And I just so happen to have a die with me and so I am actually going to roll it. So that was a one. That was a one. Yeah. Excuse me. That was a one. Maybe this isn't the best example. That was a five. That was a two. That was a 2, that was a 6, and so on. When you graph these, right, using a frequency distribution, if the event is random, right, so here are all the different dice rolls. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So this is the number on the die. And over here is the frequency. Okay, so 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. If I roll this die, right, if I roll the die uh, 12 times, each of these numbers should come up about twice. And the frequency distribution, right, should basically sort of plateau out here. Because each of these has an equal probability of occurring. Let's talk about stuff that really isn't, um, isn't random and then why it isn't random. So this is, this is one of my favorite test questions. Um, how about uh, if we take every... Third person to walk into Starbucks. Okay, we're going to sample every third person to walk into Starbucks uh, on, um, let's say, Monday. And we're going to say that this is, this is, is this random, right? Well, is it random? Well, if it is random, right, and it doesn't follow a pattern, then every single person that comes into Starbucks should have an equal probability of being selected. So here's guy one, here's guy two, here's guy three girl three right and so we're picking every third person what is the probability of guy one getting selected remember we're picking every third person probability of him being selected is zero huh weird huh what about the second guy what's the probability of them getting selected zero right what's the probability of the guy third guy getting selected a hundred percent right this guy's in for sure. And this guy, these two guys, aren't going to get in at all. Okay? 
So when we use a pattern to generate or to pick people, right, we are not picking people in a, uh, in a random way. You, you might think, oh, that's sort of silly. But I'll give you another example. This is an example from, from real life, right? Random events can't be predicted. So not predictable. Right? There's no pattern. The pattern is what allows us to predict. Okay? So uh, once, shortly after 9-11, I was flying with my mom, and um, that's me, and uh, that's mom, and this is some other guy that wasn't flying with us, and some other guy that wasn't flying with us, and some other guy that wasn't flying with us, okay? And what happened was the TSA screeners began screening people right at the gate as they were getting onto the airplane. So this is the gate to get onto the airplane. Excuse my drawings, okay? So the TSA screener must have been told uh, to randomly select one third, and she would use the term random, of the, particip or of the people that were flying, right? So here's me. Here's mom. Here's guy one, guy two, guy three, okay? So woman comes, she checks me, she says, okay, you can get on the plane. Takes mom's boarding pass, scans it, okay, you can get on the plane. Third guy, third guy, right? Oh, you've been randomly selected for uh, for additional screening, right? Pulls him out of line. Now let's imagine this isn't true at all, but let's imagine that there's a bad guy trying to do bad things to an airplane, and he is watching this TSA screener go down the line, right? So he watches the TSA screener go skip, skip, select, and let's say that he is right over here, right? So let's say I will call him bad guy. Bad guy. Okay? And the TSA screener, right, is going down. Skip or skip, skip, select. Skip, skip, select, skip, skip, select, right? And here she comes, right? Skip. Skip. Can the bad guy beat this system? Sure. All he does is he lets the person behind him go in front of him, right? and then he can go and do bad guy things on an airplane, okay? So this pattern, right, allows you to predict the outcome, which means that it's not random. So what kind of things are random? Well, uh, when we have to randomize people, or to, to do what we call randomization, right, to put people into groups or to select people at random, we have to use some element of chance in which the, all the outcomes have an equal probability of occurring. Which I know is already in your notes, but this is sort of important. Okay, equal probability of occurring. So, uh, one of the ways that we do this is, let's say that we have a really, really small class, right? Here's guy M, guy Y, guy Z, guy Q, right? We have all of these people that are in a class. And let's say that we want to randomly select them to either be in our study or not be in our study, because for some reason we don't want to give out four surveys or whatever, okay? What we can do is we can go to each one and we can flip a coin, right? The probability of this guy being in, heads they're in, tails they're out. Heads in, tails out, okay? So we flip the coin. This guy's probability of getting in based off of that coin's flip is about 50%. Go to Z. Guy Z, we flip the coin. 50% chance that he gets in. Guy Y, we flip the coin. He has a 50% chance that he can get in. Q, we flip the coin. Still 50% chance. Okay? So each of these guys, you see, has an equal probability of getting into the sample. And that's, that's random, 
right? That's a random sample, okay? Um, this does create a couple of problems sometimes. We're getting a little bit ahead of ourselves. But I probably think that you're, you've already sort of probably stumbled upon this, right? Can this guy get tails and not be in our study? Sure, and 50% of the time they will. Z, guy Z, can Z get tails and be out of our study? Yeah, 50% of the time he will. What about Y? Yeah. What about Q? Sure. So is it possible, right, that all of these guys can fall into a single group or not be selected to be in our study? Sure, it's unlikely, right, because this would be the equivalent of getting tails, 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 which is pretty unlikely. Um, but it is possible, right? And so when we create a random sample, that's one of the things that can occur, though it tends not to. About half of the time, some people will be in, this guy, this guy, right? And half of the people will not be in. All right, well, that does it for random from now on. I expect you to use it properly. Correct your friends when they use it wrong. I'm just kidding. That's irritating. All right, I will see you in the next video.